Välkomna ner. Eh. Hej, välkommen. Hej, tack så mycket. Jag ska bara lämna lite disk. Eh, jag ska egentligen inte göra mig särskilt lagrande utan jag ska introducera eh, Ryan Kennedy som är här från New York. Jag ska läsa lite poesi för oss. Så eh, ett varmt välkommen och en stor applåd till Ryan Kennedy. So uh, I have some ser- series of poems to read to you. Uh, some are very old, uh, well not very old, maybe five, six years old. And a few very new, maybe a month old, if that, when I got here to Stockholm. Uh, the, the poems range from commentaries on art, and then I take you into a little more of a social commentary. And um, it doesn't get so political, and it's very inclusive. So I, I refer to it as a collective. And, uh, and then finally we end on the topic of the heart. So, I start you out with a, a poem I recently wrote. Um, and often the titles are at the end of the poem when I write them. So, I, uh, the last line is generally the title. Okay. Our beginnings never know our ends. So why trouble with intent to make amends? as Ion doesn't know his skill, and to stamper it with logic is to kill. For the unknown we fear, this crazed wisdom of Lear. In another condition of light, one can see the strange moment of shaping what is yet to be. A moment of fitting hallucination amidst the avalanche of creation. These forms unattached to their maker, who's unable to define, to play dictator. As never ending the blind man's bluff, as finally you find you have a composition of stuff. Flesh and blood upon your hands, a character of its own, indestructible stands. As an artist cannot confine nor inflict their taste, if so, they've represented, which is the waste. For the finished is a spectacle at full range, a frozen pool of quicksands change. And uh, I go a a little further here, and uh, this next one is just a very brief, quick poem. Um, A slight commentary on sort of the art art world and the industry that's in it. Um, The measure of achievement is not won by the confidence of authority behind it, yet in patience and fair dealing. This next one takes a look at um, sort of something I feel like we've all lost. It's uh, kind of, we've become a bit of sheep in some regards in our creative processes, uh, being told what style is in in the arts or what sort of um, music to make, being dictated to to the masses. Um, For tis not the grace of hand, nor brush of talent, with which we lack. Neither an absence of aesthetics, nor the machine of knowledge, as more and more than ever before. It is our intrinsic ability, the heart, the subject which has been lost. 
as we navigate experience notating the idea, as these vast orchestrations fills empty the void. And yet, we continue to create connoisseurs of culture, duplicating doctors and dictators. We talk a good judge and play to the jury. Yet where is reason, virtue, love, the sap of living? And sometimes in writing poetry, I'll, I'll play with words. Uh, so you may hear a few made up words along the way. And, um, and then often I, I, I envision, oops, that's okay. My reader, what, what they may be envisioning. And um, at times there are things we may talk about that do not exist, but we immediately have an image in mind. And uh, that's, what this, that's what this small poem expresses. My dog barks of some kind. Yet I can tell you he is always with me. You see him in mind though I speak not to see. This last one here, um, in terms of art, looks at uh, kind of those who are going along with the flow and, and refusing to kind of create their own. Uh, it has a, has a nice little rhyme scheme to it and a good rhythm. To the follower's conception, I have but one objection. Here one seems to lose, like the drunk to booze, as never does it quit, thirsting every bit. For how can an atom make the claim that we be the tiny particles that science cannot explain? It must, the we that be that be, Conscious, conceiving, and misbelieving. With theory and not hard fact, in knighted truth we attack. As each new dogma is less exact, whose codes and rope does choke purpose, person, and perception. For little has changed with modern medicine as science at our right hand, the more, the less we understand. Asking the question outward this why, the internal rarely we try. For so obvious these dichotomies of life, up and down with such great strife. As we mark the cycle by nights and days, yet dawn and dusk is where ambiguity plays. To find and concrete, we insist, unallowing alchemy to exist. Again and again, I say to this divided curtain, that which we claim as certain is as uncertain as uncertainty is uncertain. Though still we split the stage, preaching the right of page. Here we herald proof to truth, analyze, demoralize, we demise, to be petrified, mortified, and stupefied by thee. Grand quakes and shakes that flakes this infactual and unactual static of the perpetual attic, which clings and clangs to sun-dried chains, binding, biting, brick and brock. You say tuck, and I reply, wash it good, as no one should, yet shall, create their own know-how. 
As now too many fight for the might of a penny. So click and clap, your fancy boots go splat, and sound around as they sing, let freedom ring. And so it rang, our life but a flicker, the bell tone sang. I move on to um, sort of more social commentary here. Um, that's this one. This is called meaning. For what do we owe the prestige of your complacent liege? Why the I of OU? when no thing is true. Yet ever the strife of justice, so I ask, why must this? Collective waste the given hour, choosing to steal, shoot, and devour. They owe you, and you must collect. Yet what sins have you neglect? as pointed fingers reflect. A system flawed, corrupt on every level, as each part plays a devil. If you've the reason to echo, to shout, then muster the guster and act devout. Of the wrongs you've made and the support you gave, for what's owed is meaning to the shadow you call a being. And so sometimes I speak, I've studied um, a lot of theories on, on Buddhism and Hinduism, and so I work a lot of these New Age thoughts in kind of going beyond uh, a sense of of duality and, and what is right and is wrong, and, and seeing this, this transientness to the world. So this is words of endless time. I speak to you, stranger, dweller of the cave, for whom I am weary. I speak so you may understand a journey, a passerby at hand, who haunts the given order, making the immortal a trespasser of dreams, and leaves scowling the outer end of known, a wanderer of here and there, between water and fire, lies release of despair. Remember these words brought by endless time, swept by tides of mine. For I am yesterday, today, and tomorrow. I am pain and pleasure as I am sorrow. For I am I and other just as you, who holds the green light to the black night. So often uh, when I have enough poems collected, I self-publish these books. Um, I'm on number nine at the moment, and um, I do sell them, and I sell them in shops, uh, and as I go along. And, and poetry for me came from as I continued to travel and travel more, I was further and further away from my art studio, and I needed a means of expression. And since I was a child, I would create rhymes and um, rhythms to words, and I, I very much enjoyed it. So several years ago on, on a trip, I got much further back and back into the writing. Um, and it's a, it's a great means of expression while on the road. Um, and some of you, I send poems to as well. <laughs> um, 
it's this a really lovely one here, and only we. Um, and this one I've done a video piece for as well, which you can see online. Um, and uh, I incorporated the poetry in with some a character I've been working with. Um, it's, it's a very nice video, so you have a chance to check that out online. Um, it's and only we. Reaching to ensure the outward contour of crumbled intuition. The universe at large holds no laws to govern man. It is only the pull of our own pill which keeps us from the thrill. When well-lit lightnings are out of place and only we are to fall from grace. A seated statue propped up in flame, a demon amidst the passing of blame. For a thousand faults halts the waltz of two fast feet, ending only just of wanted much. The other day, um, probably a couple months ago, I was asked, you know, what are some of my beliefs in the world, I guess, and I very quickly wrote down what I thought they were. Um, and it's very, very simple reply. My two beliefs are doubt and speculation. For uncertainty is my dogma, and curiosity is my cat. I'm basically everything's nothing set in stone. It's all very malleable, and, and even in, in artwork, I, I look at an object, and and I, I use a lot of found objects, and it's about uh, transforming that object into not only just the thought of what else it could be, but the actuality of, of taking that potential and creating it into something else. Um, so let me move on here. There's a, a poem uh, which I've kept with me, and I don't know if any of you have had a sort of a, a love affair over the years. I mean, maybe the person and you come and go between one another, and maybe it's a friend or a family member or even a, a lover. Um, and then this poem is in regards to one I had for, well, at the moment they're out, so who knows if they'll be back in the <laughs> It's called The Tempest. I've been quarantined to the hook of a journal. Our half-finished love affair, which completely kills. Silent to understand mistakes we've taken, the lives we've encountered, the direction of their potential. Again and again, over the ages of time, we cross and recross, like intersections in darkened diners, a nightmare with no reason to hide. As with yesterday, unlike today, the, the law of belief determines the crime, determines the kindness. As from past to present, we birth our own. And to fool our own, we fell in love. This is a very nice, uh, quick poem, a little repetitive, good rhythm to it. There is no title for this one. This is the love I'm always making. This is the toll it's always taking. This is the soup I am serving. This is its tone, unnerving. This is the way I share my lover. 
This is the way I treat my mother. This is the smoke which I live in. This is its haze I barely see. In. These are the hands that help your hurt. This, this is the head that unbuttons your shirt. These are the feet that walked your way. This is the pace that left one day. This is the smile, because one must. This is the game, the game of lust. So I've had a few moments of um, a bit of humility in relationships at times. Things don't always plan out the way one wants them to. And um, on this particular occasion, uh, if I can find it. Uh, on this particular occasion, I was, shall we say, um, unable to rise to the occasion. And uh, it, was, it was very humiliating, but I learned quite a bit. So it's called My Wits. Knowing his fires roar with a plenty to explore, for what's hidden is next in store. Out of context, this loveless hex, the lustful sex on fire's brim, the ease of a bot whore's whim. Bim, this bow, doesn't know what I've yet to show. For crude, this phallus does grow. For the rude interlude between his legs, my manhood begs. His universe, my only thrill, a perverse planting, deeply rooted, this pill. Opened, turned, and spread, this worldly man, upon my bed. Should, if I could, use and abuse this muse in the many of any which way. Yet stiff to soft, he does scoff. My weakness, to dismiss his nakedness and place upon his face value, honor, and grace, leaving my bits to the best of my wits. That was a fun one to write. <laughs> <laughs> uh, actually, another one I wasn't going to read, but I, I quite liked it, and I think I... Well, um, I don't know if anybody's had a moment in which you have another person around you and you just want them to exist for your pleasure of adorning and, and enjoy. So this is, um, remain in your seat. Already I crave your sided flank of flesh, smooth, supple skin, hair of nestled chest. Though there lingers a split in bed, for fear these feelings be misled. Yet still the tingle of your touch, softest lips hit this neck, his fingers clutch. Shifty shaking knees do crumble, no foul nor fumble, for my eyes they stumble, down your torso my eyes do go, waiting, wanting, this hardened self taunting. For even a rose of thorn can take its toll, and confuse my whole. Yet I'll reach a heaven when in bed with you, who sparks and holds and speaks desire. So please permit my fingertips to acquire a hearty taste of which I dare not waste the bare red wine. So remain in that seat, and I'll finish at your feet giving praise and waiting my turn to ride your reign, to listen, to learn. 
but what you choose to share and the actions you do dare. So remain in your seat, for we need not be discreet. As we discover the infinity's pleasures and seek our own of each other's treasures. I went a little off track with that one, I'm not sure, which is fine. Yeah, sometimes I, I remember being on this one, very, very little one here. I was on a train and speaking to an elderly woman. I was in Australia and she was talking to me about the distractions that, um, <laughs> that my generation has um, the, between the video games and the internet and the cell phone, which I repeatedly was looking at while on the train. And she was there knitting at 2 o'clock in the morning, 86-year-old woman, very nice lady. Um, and it got me thinking, why is it that we can be so distracted? What permits that? Um, and I, I, in, I guess in return, in regards to sex, I think um, I made this statement to point. Um, our talk of sex is vivid, frank, and often obscene. For a well-fed man can dream of a lover as his body is leisure enough for lust. And so I, I began to think of these sort of things we consider essential, but when I encounter cultures um, where you need to live day to day, albeit an indigenous culture or a homeless person, things like entertainment and sex don't, don't seem to exist. Um, it's, they live off necessity and not, and not of want. See in my books, you know. Yes, this one, uh, the Coiler, it's called. Uh, it's kind of, a, I, I recall my mother as a young kid saying, you know, um, when you point your finger, you point it at one at someone else and three at yourself. So, if, in the Kennedy household, if you spot it, then you've got it, is the idea. So if you think someone is a horrible person, the horribleness is within you as well. Um, so I, I consider that with my interactions and, and commentary on other people. Uh, and, and this one uh, is expressing that, that idea that we can look ahead and judge, yet rarely look at ourselves, and yet consider what's behind us that we may be doing an equal treatment. It's called the Coiler. From a bed of swords lies the jackal snake, whom thinks he has the bite to take. Down his enemy, up one floor, whose hand he sees on heaven's door. And so the serpent sends his guilt from the bed he had built and thinks no less of the grave distress as he casts his shame on those he seeks to blame. Yet the shame is true of him and you, the serpent scourges from his well-lit perches. And with little looking he shall find himself an enemy of those behind. Or place them all side by side, and then you'll see the nothing to hide. That they're each the same, no matter the cut or mix of mutt. For he is who, and me, and you. I do two more. Um, the last two are on a quicker pace. <laughs> um, I'm pretty certain I have the first one down. It doesn't have a title, as most of them don't, um, but it is a lengthy breath, so if I go quickly and I lose you, I, I apologize. I will try to go at a good pace. 
Toss to the hamper, the scamper of good. Should, if only you could. Hold account what you've said, even when misled. As you proudly preach to those who truly teach you. So dare I do for you to stay true to your words, this act, even as you attack. For it's frightful to think what man's done, this bloody stink, to which he winks and stupidly thinks all is well inside my dwelling. Yet outside he's made hell. And the heart he's got was paid and bought at the highest price of the lowest bid, leaving riches to buy what's nice. Though this falsely painted fur of our endless lure, for which our only cure, to make a keep in what's not cheap, yet honest, even, and fair, with the best intent and care. Cause it's a matter of fact, if it's born on someone else's back, then value and dignity it shall lack. And not lift a finger nor sack is no good for the soul, unlike the slave covered in coal, who works for pennies and dreams his master's manies. Though dark his wind does blow, for what this worker doesn't know. He's a tragic terror toppled in with the tally on. Life a rubble, swept and gone. For by they do the fallacy, as if it true, that they need be down to reach them up there, the clown, who chokes on his jokes, a pyramid his scheme keeping only his hands clean. Yet his lacking of what really counts, that which can't be weighed by ounce, the respect for life, its delicate flowers, who make the most of these few hours in which we live, handing the hand we wish to give. For no matter Bible nor science, no matter the alliance, when all is said and dead, it's not the books you've read or the opinion she spread, but the life we led. Um, and this, this last one here uh, has a similar rhythm and tone to it. It's a little. It's not as long, um, and it was it was done in one breath on a very emotional night. Um, there was that one of those people in and out of your life and, and sometimes people know the buttons to push and I had a lot of buttons pushed that evening. <laughs> um, <clears throat> uh, this, this, this I think is a good way to end. Um, it's called a douche. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, um, it, it's quicker usually. I wrote it in, in one sitting, one breath, and I have not changed it since then. But I, I, I try to slow it down a bit here. Um, so, um, douche. A fool I am to think of you as something more, something true. You who pickled and pulled apart this wild and winded heart, whom you teased and toyed an endless void. I can hardly tell what I dare did sell, for a soul was the toll of this heart's swell, whose midnight hour reads a morning light that bleeds, as time is short, retort, retort. Knowing now not to try nor train to withstand such pain. What that which you deal and wheel, expecting thee to kneel. So hardly and without haste, allow me to express this waste of time and heart. For a fool I am 
to think of you apart. Fractions of a we that cannot be, for a gambit, for a gambit of cheap tricks, you are thee. One who shakes any hand to reach the stand and make a speech of those you leech, telling the tale of what's what to the trapped and shut. Out, 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 for a fool I am to think of you, a constant weary who heckles and haggles these shitty shackles. And to you, the sinner in the back of the church, who lingers to avoid the scourge of this fired and well-lit path, your stench bleeds the bath. So party hard and strong, for life's parody is not long. For a fool I am to think of you as one who might his may and attempt to explain his way. Faults in words of unknown action, whose intent lost its traction. So please feel the steel of your own cut, you crossbred mix of mutt, holding the knife you spoon, for I the loom of lonesome tune. For a fool I am to think of you. Out, out, out. That's it.